because God got a season for you. And if you trust in him, he's going to bring it to pass. And when he brings it to pass, God will blow your mind. I feel better, so much better since I laid my burden, burden down, Lord, burden down, Lord, since I laid my burden down, burden down. Considering it in its entirety, uh, I will be reading from the New International Version. There it is written The Lord reigns. Let the earth be glad. Let the distant shores rejoice. Clouds and thick darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness and all the people see his glory. All who worship images are put to shame. Those who boast in idols, worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and rejoices, and the villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, O Lord, are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Let those who love the Lord hate evil. For he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light is shed upon the righteous and joy on the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you who are righteous, and praise his holy name. This is the word of God for all of those who love his name. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God. The one who said, let there be, and there was, the maker of every good and perfect gift. Lord, we come with our heads bowed, our hearts humble, and our hearts filled with thanks. We come praising you, Lord, because you're God and you're God all by yourself. Lord, we know you don't need our help to do anything, but we can't do anything without you. So, Lord, we come thanking you just for being so good and so loving and so kind to us. Lord, you woke us up early this morning and allowed us to see another day that we've never seen before. Lord, when we woke up this morning, you were on our hearts and on our minds. And then, Lord, you gave us a shelter over our head. You put food on our table. The clothes on our back. Lord, then you gave us our part of our right mind and we didn't do the things that weren't right in your sight. So, Lord, we just thank you for being so good and continuing to take care of us the way that you do. Lord, we come thanking you just for, for just whatever it is that we needed. Lord, you, you gave us everything that we needed. Then, Lord, you gave us some of the things that we want. Lord, so we know that you are a loving God, and all we got to do is just say thank you. 
Lord, we can't pay you for what, we, what you've done for us because we know it's not because of our goodness, but all about your amazing grace and your mercy. So, Lord, we thank you for your grace and that mercy. Then, Lord, we thank you for this place called Mount Ephraim that you've given us, that we can come and lift up your holy and righteous name. Then, Lord, you gave us a shepherd and, and his first lady, that, Lord, that compares to none other. Lord, we know that you put them here, and we are so grateful. Yeah. So, Lord, we pray that you will bless them immensely. Whatever they stand in need of, Lord, grant it to them right now. Build them up on every leaning side and strengthen them where they're weak. And then, Lord, whatever it is we can do to help them, put it on our hearts to do it, Lord, and to do it with simplicity and with joy. Because, Lord, we love them, and we love them like we love you. Yeah. So, Lord, we pray that you continue to lead and guide them as they lead us on this path called life. Then, Lord, we thank you for just bringing them here and putting him here for 50 long years. Because, Lord, that's a long time to be in service. But we know that you've had your hand on them all this time. So we just thank you for that. Then, Lord, we pray that you will bless your word today. Whatever it is you have in store for us, Lord, lead our pastor deep in your storehouse of knowledge. That he'll give us a word that we need to hear. That'll give us some encouragement and give us hope, Lord, that we know that through you, that nothing, all is not lost. So, Lord, we pray and we thank you for all that you've done. And then, Lord, we pray that you would touch Mount Ephraim as a whole, touch us individually. We can't, still can't meet, Lord, together in person, but we're still doing it virtually. So, Lord, we pray that whatever we do in this service today, that you'll anoint us from the sound man, Lord, all the way to the camera people. Anoint our hands, our voices, our hearts, whatever it is we need to do today, Lord, we pray that you would just touch it and anoint it and let it be pleasing in your sight and let someone feel your Holy Spirit through us. So use us how you will, Lord, however you see fit. Use us. Then, Lord, we pray that you would search our hearts. Remove anything from it that's not pleasing in your sight. And Lord, that's all we do. We just want to please you. So, Lord, we pray that you'll have your way today in this service. Have your way in our hearts. Then, Lord, we need you in this world today. There's a whole lot going on. Not only is there a coronavirus, Lord, but there's still... Issues going on with our leadership in our White House, Lord, even in the state. So, Lord, we pray that you would just touch, touch this country, touch this world with your mighty hand. Because you said in your word that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then would you hear from heaven and you would heal the land. So, Lord, we need you right now. We need you, really, really need you, Lord. So we pray, Lord, that you would touch all of those families that have lost loved ones, not only from the coronavirus, but from other diseases. So, Lord, we pray all of those that are affected and have contracted that virus and those that contracted cancer and sugar diabetes Lord we know one touch from you can heal any illness so Lord we pray that you have put your healing hand on us Lord help us continue to lead and guide us we thank you Lord we praise you we magnify you we glorify you we lift up your holy and righteous name because we know we can't pay you but we will say thank you then Lord all of those who are incarcerated those in nursing homes those in the hospitals Lord they don't let us go see them in the hospital but we know that you are there with them so Lord we pray that you would let them know that our spirit is there with them too just continue to let, touch them Lord and heal deliver and set free Free. Yeah. Then bless those who don't know you in the free pardon of their sin. Lord, because we know you are still saving souls and you let this world still live. We have a Savior, Lord, that lives and we continue to worship and praise him. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We magnify you and we glorify you. Whatever I failed in asking, Lord, don't fail in giving. I know you are true and a loving God. And we ask all of these things in your son Jesus' name. And every heart said amen. I feel good, good, good. I tell you I feel good, good, good. Y'all, every time I think about Jesus, I feel good. Oh, I feel good, good, good. I tell you I feel good. Every time I think 
think about Jesus, I feel good. Well, my Lord did just what he said. He healed the sick and he raised the dead. I tell you, every time I think about Jesus, I feel good. Set me free, Lord, have mercy on me. While every time I think about Jesus, I feel good. Oh, I feel good, good, good. I tell you, I feel good, good, good. Lord, every Jesus and Calvary, I tell you every time I think about Jesus, I feel good. Oh, I feel good, good, good. I tell you I feel good, good, good. water was cold it to chill my body but not my soul I tell you every time I think about Jesus I feel good oh I feel good 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 I tell you I feel Every time I think about Jesus, I feel good too. Amen. We thank you so much for allowing us to serve you in praise and devotional service this morning. And at this time, we'll return the, return the remainder of the service back into the hands of our First Lady, Evangelist Lorraine Jock White. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you so much to our wonderful deacons for a great praise service this morning. We're excited to be here after a wonderful Thanksgiving service, our new normal Thanksgiving service, but we can always be grateful to God for the many things that he's done for us. And now we're going to call on Dr. Angela Taylor to give us the updates of what's going on at the Mount. Dr. Taylor.
Good morning, good morning. On behalf of Dr. White, Sister White, and the entire Mount Ephraim Baptist Church family, let me take this opportunity to welcome you to our 7.30 a.m. virtual service. We pray that a song is sung, a prayer is prayed, a scripture is read, and a sermon is heard that will richly touch your heart. And when Dr. White extends the invitation of discipleship, that you will give God your heart, and when we are able to come back as one unified physical body, that you will give Dr. White your hand. And we say you're welcome to this 7:30 service. We would also like to extend very happy birthdays to many of our people celebrating birthdays today or in this past week. If it is your birthday, we say happy birthday to you, Brother Jason Coffey. Happy birthday, Jackie James, uh, Sister Uni, Mother Uni Wallace. Happy birthday. Missionary Linda Scott, happy birthday to you as well. And Brother Jeremiah Keith, we say happy birthday to you. To those celebrating an anniversary, we say happy anniversary to you as well. Brother Willie and Gwen Watkins, celebrating 21 years. May God richly bless, bless you. Last Sunday, Deacon Al Thurman and Sister Jackie Thurman celebrated their anniversary. Deacon Benny Baxter and Sister Maddie Baxter celebrates 51 years of marriage. We say God God bless you and happy anniversary. And to Mr. Roy and Mrs. Betty Williams, who celebrates 50 years of wedded bliss, we say happy anniversary to you as well. If we didn't get a chance to call your name, uh, please charge it to my head and not my heart. We say happy anniversary. We love all of our members here at Mount Ephraim. So we say happy anniversary, happy birthday. And to those of you visiting us via the, our website, live streaming, as well as Facebook Live, we say welcome. We would like to pause at this moment to give Mother Carol Russell an acknowledgement. She uh, participated in the virtual Peachtree Road Race for Thanksgiving. She is 77 years young and completed 6.2 miles. So Mother Carol Russell, we say congratulations. We love you and we support all of your endeavors. You keep us young, amen. Thank you for walking those, those wild miles for me. Amen. I appreciate you so much. Mother Russell, we love you and congratulations. We also want to take this moment to pause and say thank you for those of you who showed up on Wednesday, Thanksgiving Eve, to be a support and to be uh, supportive to our community as we distributed over 5,000 boxes of food. So to Deaconess Sadie Scott, who, spirit, who is the leader of the official board, to the men of Mount Ephraim and Deacon Lloyd Mars, to the officers resource ministry who's led by Sister Sheila Barnes, to the Ariel White Correct who showed up in great number with Katrina Barnum Scott and Carolyn Bridges, who also who's led by a pastor, to the Fulton County Sheriff's Department and Sheriff Ted, to the Mount Ephraim Greeters led by Deaconess Marilyn Mitchell, and to our Pastor First Lady, Dr. McElroy, Mr. McElroy, we say thank you for leading us with this giveaway. We were able to touch so many churches, so many lives in the community, and we thank you for spearheading this and guiding this. We love you, appreciate you, and we look forward to the next opportunity to volunteer with you all as we remain a church without walls. Mount Ephraim, here are your announcements. We will transition back this week to our normal schedule, so we invite you to join us on Wednesday at 7.30 a.m. for our prayer call with our pastor at 7 o'clock p.m. on Facebook Live with, for worship on Wednesdays. We invite you to join us again on Facebook Live on Saturdays for our power, and we hope that you will join us for those amazing times of fellowship with our pastor. Also, we invite you to join us 7.30 a.m. for our virtual service coming to you live from Facebook Live as well as live streaming and our website as well as our 10.45 a.m. virtual service until the Lord says that we can come back as one unified body. We also would like to thank you for your continued acts of giving to support the ministry of Mount Ephraim during this pandemic season. For those of you all who would like to continue to give, 
We simply ask that you download the Givelify app to your smartphone or to your tablet, after, we, after which we ask that you select Mount Ephraim Baptist Church, Atlanta, Georgia, and then follow the prompts to give. You can also give through our website, www.mymebc.com. And for those of you all who enjoy the more traditional forms of giving, we ask that you make your checks and money orders payable to the Mount Ephraim Baptist Church, and then mail that to Mount Ephraim, P.O. Box, 92351 Atlanta, Georgia 30314. Again, that's P.O. Box 92351 Atlanta, Georgia 30314. And now, as we transition to our community news, we would like to remind you that you can now request your absentee ballot. We ask that you do so, complete it, and mail it as soon as possible. Please be mindful that we need for all of your signatures to match on your absentee ballot. They are really being conscientious and looking because they're still trying to figure out how God did that thing here in the state of Georgia. So they're going to continue to look at your signatures to make sure that they match. So when you pull, when you request your absentee map ballot, please, please, please be conscientious enough to make sure that all of your signatures match. There's still time for you to register to vote. If you have anyone in your household that is will be turning 17 before turning 18, I apologize, before it's time for us to vote in the runoff election, we ask that you get them registered to vote as well. Also, please be reminded that COVID is still real. They're trying to find ways to get the vaccine to different locations, but they're uh, encountering some glitches. But what they have learned is that masking up works. Masking protects both you as well as the people who are around you. So I take my seat by saying, wear your mask, wash your hands, practice social distancing, and let's help to reduce this spread. And always remember that number one, one, masking is ministry and until next week please remain Mount Ephraim strong and now we're going to have a special announcement from the Deacon Roger Long thank you good morning Mount Ephraim I am um, here for just a moment of your time uh, to share some insight or some additional insight rather uh, about this fabulous new book uh, by our pastor. Ex Nihilo by our pastor Dr. White more than illuminates his life, work, and worldview which are all centered around his faith. This work is a compelling account of what it means to persevere and to give your all in service to the Lord. As an avid reader of autobiographies and biographies, I just assumed that as I began reading Ex Nihilo, it would be the same as most other personal memoirs of this nature. Long on feelings and memories, but short on substance. I could not have been more wrong. Don't let the 140 pages fool you. This book is substantial, it is cohesive, and so well written that you can feel a portion of the pain Pastor White has experienced in his own life. I know certainly when I got to the chapter entitled, When the Bottom Falls Out, Dr. White had me and I couldn't put the book down. For in many ways, his experiences in this chapter paralleled those in my own life. With the turn of each page, I came to realize and more fully appreciate the man we all call pastor. Now, this book is not for everyone. If you've never been through any difficulty in your life, if you've never had adversaries, if you never doubted yourself, this book is not for you. If your marriage is perfect and everything you touch turns to gold, this book may not be for you. But if your life has thrown you some curveballs, this book is for you. If your time in the valley seems to be a little longer than everyone else's, this book is for you. If you want to see how God can take a man from nothing, show him favor, and use him in a mighty way, get the book Ex Nihilo, Out of Nothing, by Dr. R.L. White, Jr. Thank you. 
you said. Thank you so much, Dr. Taylor, for the announcements, and thank you, Deacon Roger Long, Dr. Taylor. Please excuse me for one moment. I said Mother Carol Russell, her, I should have said Mother Ellen Russell, Judge Carol Russell's mother-in-law. So I apologize. Again, it's Mother Ellen Russell who did the miles, and Carol Russell, Judge Carol Russell, is her daughter-in-law. Please accept my apologies. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. We are now going to have some great singing, great music, coming on this morning with Dr. R. L. White and some great, great singers. I see them sitting in the audience. They're ready to go. And they usher us right into the presence of the Lord every Sunday. And we say thank you. Here they come. The R. L. White Corral and their leader, Dr. R. L. White Jr. Good morning.
Amen. Can we have a witness today that God is good? Amen. Amen. When I woke up this morning, I thought of the goodness of the Lord. And I heard the lady on the radio sing today that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? I called the Corral yesterday and said we hadn't practiced it. In fact, we hadn't sung it for several years. I wanted to see if they still remember that. But all that I have And all that I hope to be, I owe it all to Jesus. And that's why today, I want to say, Jesus, 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 oh how I love Every day, every day, your name is the Oh, oh Jesus, Jesus, sweet Jesus, Jesus. Oh, how I love, how I love, calling your name, Jesus, Jesus. Every day, every day, your name is the same. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, sweet Jesus, Jesus. Oh, how I love, how I love. Anybody love and call that name today? Every day, every day, your name is the same. Call him Jesus, Jesus, my lily in the valley, Jesus, my bright and morning star, Jesus, my wheel, Jesus, in the middle of a wheel. I need a friend. Jesus. I need a waymaker. Jesus. I say, Jesus. Jesus. Anybody here know him? Jesus. Have you ever tried him? Jesus. Ain't he all right? Jesus. The reason I know. He's all right. Jesus. All of my life. Jesus. I've known who the Lord is. Jesus. I want somebody. Jesus. Listening to me right now. Jesus. If you haven't tried him. Jesus. Just say Jesus. Just say Jesus, oh how I love, how I love, calling your name, oh, oh, oh. Jesus, Jesus, sweet Jesus, Jesus, every day. Hallelujah. I greet you in the name of Jesus, 
who once said and I if I be lifted from the earth will draw all men unto me and wherever you may be listening from today I'm aware that people all over the country in some foreign countries are listening today and I say thank you for tuning us in thank you that this week we decided that we wanted to feed some people and we found the source and they told us that they were going to give us 2,600 meals, 2,600 boxes of grocery. But then they had a cancellation from somewhere else. And they were to send us two truckloads, but they sent four truckloads. And I was wondering, why as much as we had moved I looked around more was there and thanks be to God we got the job done I want to thank Lorraine and Dr. and Mr. McElroy the Lord Morris and the Mount Ephraim men united for Christ. Thank Beacon and Sister Henderson who went above and beyond the call of duty. Sister Henderson, as fast as she could get a car out and go give it out, she would come back for more. I want to thank the sheriff, Ted Jackson. I, I asked for officers to be here to make sure that everything went well. I thought he might send about one, but he sent a number of officers and then he came himself and we stood together I want to thank the greeters and all of those wonderful women of Mount Ephraim and when it became evident that we we're not giving it out fast enough. I called a radio station. They let me talk on the air. Derek Bozeman. And I said, send people over here. And in just a few minutes, they started arriving. Even with all of that, we still had food left. It started raining and most of the people had gone home. But it was just a few of us left and, and I helped to place boxes in the cars and in the trucks and And it troubled me because I didn't want to just not get that food out. We called in Young North. And we said, send a truck over here. And he sent a big truck. 
We called the pastors. They came back. And then when it became evident that we just couldn't give it all away, that was twice as much as we had planned. So I asked them to put it in the basement while I went home to pray about it. And the next morning, which was Thanksgiving, I called Deacon Morris, I called Deacon Henderson, and I said, we've got to find somebody who needs this food. They got right back up. And we were able to get it all out. And I want to thank God. I might be missing somebody's name here today. But you know when you help somebody, you yourself are being helped. Oh, yes. So today, I can say that during this pandemic, Mount Ephraim has had three COVID-19 testings, food to give away, and we have now our own polling place here at the church. And I thank God for us being a conduit. If you get it to us, we're going to get it where it's supposed to be. And Mount Everett, wherever you are now, if you're in your bed, you ought to just say, thank you, Jesus. Sister Phyllis Francois lost a sister. Phyllis, we are praying for you. Sister Betty Williams lost her brother this week. We are praying for you. Sister Rone Reeves lost her eldest sister this week. We pray for you. You remember me telling you about Isaac and Terry Logan who the tree fell into their home. Well, a brother in the family had a very serious, I believe it's a heart attack. I might not call the illness right, but he is now on a ventilator. Terry, if you can give him word, let him know that your church is praying for him. Sister Florence Askin, Sister Beverly Coma, Sister Pat Smith, Brother Ernest Henley. And I know this is not an exhaustive list, but we are trying to keep up with the membership because we never thought the church would have to be away for so long. And I want to thank this staff for just being here, giving of yourself each week. And I want to tell you, I can't pay you. I might buy you a sandwich every once in a while. But the Lord has a record 
Don't be looking up at me, Carolyn, like that. <laughs> Maybe two sandwiches. <laughs> but the Lord keeps a good record. And he said in those last days, there will be a great multitude of people waiting to be judged. And he said, the sheep and the goats will be there together. And God will separate the sheep from the goat. Jesus said, some people will be there expecting to say, come into the joys of our Lord, but the Lord is going to say, depart from me, I didn't know you. What you mean, Jesus, don't you know I, I, I went to Mount Ephraim? Don't you know I sang in the choir? Why are you saying that? He said, because when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was naked, you didn't clothe me. When I was in jail, you didn't visit me. And Jesus said, they're going to ask the question, when did we see all of this? And he said, the least you do unto my little ones, you've done it also unto me. And he said, then I'm going to say to those on the right, enter now into the joys of the Lord because when I was hungry you fed me when I was naked you clothed me when I was in prison you visited me and thank God every day of the week we still feed not a lot of them now, but the homeless in this neighborhood. And Lord, this is our way of saying to you today, thank you for just being God. I want to pray for us now. And thank you, Judge Russell, for your mother-in-law we, we, we buried her husband less than six months ago and she's out there doing a walk a virtual walk that says that God is still able sister Florence asking and there's a 93 year old later lady in LaGrange sister Estelle she made out the form that every month a part of her check allotment comes to Mount Ephraim and every Saturday night she's listening and watching let's pray for her today Thank you, Lord, for another week. Lord, you've been so good to us. In the midst of this infamous pandemic that has attacked and killed so many hospitals 
a bulging with so many people whose names we'll never know. But in spite of it all, you've allowed us to live a little while longer. And we want to say thank you. Thank you that when the clock alarmed this morning, we were able to answer the call one more time. And while we slumbered and slept all night long, You gave us protective angels that watched over us while we slumbered and slept. And early this morning, you allowed an angel to touch us with the finger of love and when we open our eyes today we still have our right minds we remembered our names. We remembered what year it is. Which said you gave us our right mind. And most of us, without even thinking about it, we step out of our beds. But when we know so many can even get out of bed, then we realized that was a blessing. It was a blessing and that you carried us through another Thanksgiving. And we realize that we ought to thank you more than Thanksgiving time. But when we look back, see where you brought us from. You brought us through dangers seen and unseen you've been a doctor in a sick room some of us had to go to court but you showed up in court and the judge said a case dismissed thank you Lord we've had accidents that could have taken our lives but you protected us and here we are today realizing that we can't pay you for what you've done but at least we can say thank you thank you for all that you are thank you for where you brought us from 
Mm-hmm. And we even want to thank you for what's in our future. But we know by faith you will not leave us alone. And that's why we pray right now everybody under the sound of my weak voice that they will hear your word today and then oh God we can't close this prayer without asking you to forgive us when we sin against you and listening to me right now that somebody with a broken heart somebody that needs a job somebody mm -hmm, was homeless last night Lord we are asking you to have mercy today and when the word goes out forward please oh God let somebody hear your word come crying I yield I cannot hold out any longer then Lord then Lord when we've gone the last mile of the way when we've got to go reeling and rocking somewhere in a dying room Lord we don't know where death is but one thing we know that if you be there we won't be afraid to cross the swelling tide give us a home somewhere in your kingdom where we can praise you throughout eternity these and other blessings we ask in the name of Jesus amen and amen through the years I keep on tolling tolling through the storm and rain Patiently waiting and watching Oh yes Until the Savior Till the Savior comes again Oh I Me in your love I'm asking you to write mine My name above Oh when Yeah The gates When the gates swing open to love my enemies oh teach me how to love my friends oh fill me with your 
Holy Spirit unto the Savior till the Savior comes again oh oh hi me and your love I'm asking you to write my my name above my name above oh when when yeah the gate when the gate swing open swing open I'm gonna be so happy when yeah long the gate when the gate swing open swing I want to see my mother again, yellow, yeah, when the gates swing open, I want to see my father, yellow, yeah, when the gates swing open, I got two brothers already going on. Yeah, Lord. When the gates swing open, I want to see my brothers again. Yeah, Lord. When the gates swing open, but most of all, yeah, Lord. When I see Jesus, I've got something to tell him. Yeah, Lord. When the gates swing open, I want to tell him I thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Lord. Somebody ought to tell the Lord, thank you right now. Thank you. If he's been good to you, you tell him thank you. Thank if God ever answered your prayer, thank you, tell him thank you. thank you. God bless you, Corral. Thank you all so much. Say good morning to the chair of our board, Sister Scott watches both services every Sunday. And she said, Pastor, when you get up talking in that closing number, I move right with you. Thank God for her. There was a word from the Lord. Psalms 51, beginning at verse number one. Have mercy on me, 
O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thou tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. I'm going to leave it to you to read the rest of the verses there, but verse 10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. I've got a subject today. I want to ask you, do you want to be a better person? Here's the subject. God give me open ears, a controlled tongue, an understanding heart, and the right spirit. Four things. God give me open ears. Everybody say open ears. A controlled tongue. Come on, y'all. An understanding heart and a right spirit. That's our subject today. I can say without fear of contradiction that one of the greatest problems in this world today is one word, and that is communication or the like thereof. I believe that if you can just develop your ability to listen more and control your tongue and pray for understanding and ask God for a right spirit, God will bless the way that you are able to make it in this world. We all must understand that nothing has been communicated until something is understood. And one thing that we hear more than we want to hear when people so often say we had a misunderstanding. Amen. Let's look at each of these ingredients in the message today and wisdom will be your best friend. Number one, listen more than you talk. Amen. There's a listening crisis in the world today. And most of us want to be heard, but we don't want to hear. And many times we miss out 
on our greatest blessings because we don't listen well. Preach white. I submit today that relationships that could have made it fail when there is no active listening. Because so often we really don't get the real meaning because we lean to our own understanding. Children make mistakes when they think they know everything because they think their parents are too old school. But can I tell you young people, it hadn't been that long. And everything that was still is. When we pray for God's help in life's situation, too often, God tries to speak to us. But you are so busy talking that you cannot hear what God is saying. Not because God doesn't answer our prayers, but we're just busy talking. God speaks to us in three ways. He speaks through his holy scriptures. He speaks through nature. Whenever you want to know how great God is, just go outside and look up. And you look in amazing awe and wonder what kind of being created all of this. And that heard that word that you hear me mention, ex nihilo. That's an old Latin word meaning created out of nothing. Then you know how great God is. He speaks to us through the scriptures, through nature, and through his Holy Spirit. God sometimes speaks to us in an audible, deep voice. And I've heard God's deep voice only once or twice in my life. I shall never forget when I was working in the postal service in Washington, D.C., I still remember I was a carrier that went to government offices all over the city of Washington and and I was singing a spiritual song one that I had been singing with my group the night before and I said I wonder why I can't stop singing this song and in a deep voice, I heard the Lord say, I want you to preach my gospel. Scared the daylights out of me. Sometimes God speaks to us in a loud and audible deep voice. But sometimes God speaks in just a whisper. And the problem is when we do not recognize God's voice. Amen. 
That's what I want to say today. Sometimes when you pray, don't be in such a hurry to say amen and run about your daily life. Maybe you ought not leave your praying ground. And it would be good to learn how to meditate. Meditating means to think on. Sometimes when we pray, God answers us right away, but we didn't hear him. Amen. And then sometimes when we hear him, and it works out good, you, you want to take the credit. You know what I did? I thought about this, and I, it worked out because I thought, no, sometimes God speaks to you in a still, small voice. Sometimes God says, be at peace. when you don't have encouragement, encourage yourself. Amen. There's a story about a man who was stranded on a rooftop in the rising floodwaters. Amen. And while he was on that rooftop they came with a boat and they said hop aboard he said no I, I prayed and, and God's gonna deliver me they went on a helicopter came and said Grab the ladder, we will rescue you. No, God's coming. And then another boat came by. Said, Mister, hop aboard. And he said, I'm waiting on God. And the man stayed on the rooftop and drowned. And when he got into heaven, he was upset with the Lord. He said, I beg you to come and rescue me. And the Lord said, I sent two boats in the helicopter. <laughs> but you didn't have sense enough to know that God uses others to answer our prayers. Now, every time you go to the mirror, look at the way God made you. He gave you two ears and one mouth. That says maybe you should listen twice as much as you talk. I'm trying to help somebody here today. Amen. Next thing, pray for tongue control. Brother James in the New Testament helps us to realize that the power that we have in our tongues. Have you ever said anything that you later wish you hadn't said? I know I have. 
And sometimes people have told things that they shouldn't have told and caused a loss of life. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that some of us just talk too much. You argue with the television. Ain't nobody in the room but you and the TV. And you trying to act like they hear you. Especially when they're talking about 45. And some of us, when you're angry, you get diarrhea at the mouth. <laughs> you say things that you don't mean. Preach white. And later, you don't even know what you said. There are others who tell everybody's business but their own. And some of us are experts when it comes to criticism. You ought to have your PhD in criticizing. You can't hold anything. Preach white. And some of us add our own interpretation of what has been said. Amen. Pray that God will give you wisdom to know when to speak and when to shut up. God tried to tell us, I put your tongue between this barricade called teeth. And if you keep your barricade close, you won't get in too much trouble. Preach white. Brother James, what do you say? about the tongue. James 3 and 8 in the New Testament says, the tongue is a fire. A well of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person sets the whole course of his life on fire and sets itself on fire by hell. Speak on, James. No man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. Can I get a witness here? James goes on to say that with our tongue comes out a blessing and a cursing. And he says, these things should not be. Amen. The Bible says the power of life is in your tongue. That's why too many of us don't get any farther than we have because we flunk ourselves by the way we talk. Amen. 
We talk about our pet sins, that's where I've been all my life. We talk about believing yourself, no, I'm, I'm all right, I'm all right where I am now. But then you can criticize somebody, listen to what Jesus says. Don't criticize folk. This is Jesus. Matthew chapter 7, 1. But by the way that you criticize others, you will be measured by the same way. In other words, when you're saying something nasty about somebody, somebody is somewhere saying something nasty about you. Preach white. So Jesus says, judge not. And that word translated means criticize not. And you won't be criticized. R.L. White says today, never judge anybody until you walk a mile in their shoes. It was said that a professor wanted to give his theological students a great lesson. And he said to them, I want you to go today because I got a sermon to preach. And all you're going to preach. And he took a basket of feathers. And he opened that bag and those feathers just went everywhere. He said, that's your lesson for today. The then they wondered, what kind of preaching is this? The next morning, he said to them, I want you to go out and find all those feathers and bring them back. He said, are you crazy? Do you know what? Those feathers are blowing in the wind. How do you expect us to bring them back? That's your lesson. When your words go out, come on somebody, and you say so many things, you're just spreading feathers. And then when you need to go back and pick them up, you notice that whatever you said is somewhere still in the air because you spoke it. Now let me say this to you. Some of us criticize so much until we criticize ourselves. Dumb me. Anybody can mess up, I'll do it. I wish I hadn't been so stupid. And you go on with your stupid self. But for me, I have learned not to say negative things about myself. If I say something negative, it means that I should have known better, and from now I'll do better. But stop your negative confessions. Things never did go right for me, and I don't expect them to start now. Come on, somebody. All my life, I've made a mess. All right. How many times do you have to keep saying that? Because every time you say it, you're brainwashing yourself. And as a people, we walk around blaming ourselves until we get brainwashed. Did you know that what businesses do, they have a department 
that deal with the mind that they want to brainwash you in something you didn't even know that you had learned. But you learned it years ago. And still today, a commercial that you haven't heard in 25 years. Plop, plop. This fears. My, oh my. What a relief it is. Y'all remember that? You didn't need to learn that. Come on, somebody. I'm glad I used dial. <laughs> you remember that? A blank is ready when you are. Y'all remember that? Delta. Yeah. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Preach white. You didn't go to learn this, but you heard it so much that you can go right along with the commercial. Amen. That's the way it is in your personal life. You keep saying things that all it has to do is to pop up in your mind and you say it again. And if I've ever learned anything in my life, it's to stop criticizing, stop judging others, because I learned that you never judge anybody until you walk a mile in their shoes. I hope you all not sleep today. Amen. Stop looking at the homeless folk and say, if you had saved your money like I got saved mine, you wouldn't be out here begging. We just judge everybody. Lord, please give me tongue control. Preach white. Next thing, pray for understanding. One of your greatest prayers should be to God. God, give me understanding. There's a Bible verse that says, there is a way that seems to be right to man. But the end thereof is destruction. Proverbs 4, 6, and 9. That scripture says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and above all, Get understanding. Wisdom is the quality of having good experience and good judgment. Wisdom is the quality of being. But so many mistakes are made when we start talking without getting a full understanding so we are not communicators because we don't listen well amen somebody and we use our tongue too much 
door of half cocked by not getting a clear understanding what you should do. <coughs> D. God give me a right spirit. We all have a spirit. Did you know that? And that part of you, that spirit is that part of you that people cannot touch. But they have the ability to read your spirit. Have you ever looked at somebody and say, now, they never done anything to me? I don't know much about them. But something about them just isn't right. You're reading their spirit. So if you agree that we all have a spirit, can I tell you, we all have the ability to shut our spirit off from certain folk. How do I know when somebody has shut me off? When people you know start treating you cold, they've closed their spirit to you. When people stop speaking to you, come on somebody. They've closed their spirit to you. When people don't treat you good or treat you bad, they just don't treat you. And you remember when they used to be glad to see you come, but now they're quiet and walk off without even saying a word. They have closed their spirit. And whenever you get around certain folk, there's some tension between you. You don't, you don't know what it is. All you know, you don't feel comfortable around them. Preach right. If you would look in the story about Absalom, Tamar, and Amnon, Amnon raped his sister. And Absalom came along while she was rest registering her disapproval. And he said to her, Has Amnon sexually assaulted you? She said, yes. So he gave her some of the worst advice when he said, don't let this bother you because we can't let it get out. And the Bible says for the next two or three years, he closed his spirit off to Amnon. And the Bible says he spoke neither good nor bad. His spirit was closed. Preach way. He thought he could hold that within him and wouldn't tell anybody about it but there was something about what he had heard it bothered him and he tried to keep it in and finally he 
he couldn't keep it anymore. He stopped speaking down none, said neither good nor bad. But it stayed within him until he planned and killed his own brother because of what he had done. Because he had a closed spirit. Do you have a closed spirit against somebody now? That you hate to see him coming? Have you closed your spirit out to your mother, your father? You won't even call, won't even go see him no more? Have you closed your spirit to your sisters and brothers, to your friends, or to folk at the church that you can't stand now? And sometimes when people are closed, like a man and his wife might be closed, he or she may not understand why the spirit is closed, but they give him something and, and, and the, the, that spirit is closed. I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't want that. Nothing's going to be right until we get what close your spirit settle. Preach white. And brothers and sisters, I have learned that when you cannot open your spirit back up to people, that you're on your way down. Now that might be somebody in your church, as we're in church this morning. I know y'all of us, we together, you know, we together. But somebody in your church upset you. And you have not been able to look at them straight since. And you don't want to be around them. You know why? You have a closed spirit. One thing that we've got to understand is that God gives each of us a spirit. And until your spirit is connected with God's spirit, life for you is spiritually dead. Why? Because God is a spirit. And God gives each of us a spirit. And it's only when you allow the devil to clog up your spirit. That's why I've said in my lifetime, I'll never let anybody drag me low enough to hate them. Because when I hate folk, I'm blocking out God's spirit. I don't know about you, but I want to walk with the Lord. I want to talk with the Lord. And I want to feel God's presence in my life. And if I got to go through all of that hatred on the inside of me, I can't feel God's spirit. The text today written by David he had lost his connection with God how did he do that well you know the story how he had fallen in love with a married woman got her pregnant and you fell in lust with her, got her pregnant. Knew it couldn't be a husband, baby, because he off in the wall. And you know, when you start doing wrong, you try to cover everything up. But the more you cover, the worse you get. Preach white. Right? And what's happening is the devil's trying to separate you from God's love. 
I don't have time to tell that old story. But what it did, it cut off his communication with God. Now that ain't the only thing will cut off your communication. Lying to cut it off. Come on, somebody. Hating folks will cut it off. Robbing God will cut it off. Amen. Amen. And he lost God's spirit and couldn't even tell it. All he knew was that something was wrong. And I want to tell you, when you are wrong, I'm not saying if, because everybody in here get wrong. Amen. It kills your inspiration. You don't want to pray because you, you promised God the last time you did, you wasn't going to do it no more. Now you got to go face God again. No, you just rather not pray. <laughs> but when you know anything, you go to church like you used to go and you can't feel anything. Preach way. And then you say, I'm going to move my membership. To where? If you ever find the perfect church, don't you join it. Because if you do, it won't be perfect anymore because you have been there. Can I get a witness here? Stop telling folks about it. Ain't nothing in church but hypocrites. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got some in here. Amen. But I'd rather be in, in church with a few hypocrites than be in hell with all of them. <laughs> now here was David. Did something wrong and tried to cover it up. That God doesn't hit you on the head every time you do something wrong. But what he will do is withdraw his spirit from you. And you want to blame everybody? It's a preacher. It's the deacons. It's them hypocritical quiet noise. They stand them. Have you ever thought that the problem is not your preacher, not your deacon, not the choir members, not the church. It's in you. David was such a talented writer. But he lost his inspiration. He was a great musician. But it didn't satisfy him anymore. And you know what he did? He did what we call put on airs. He pretended that he was all right. You ever been around folk that you had to pretend you okay? Amen. But when you love the Lord, I don't care what you do, God will show you well, you were wrong. And David got what he couldn't feel the spirit. But because he loved God, God said, I want to get his spirit right. So God sent the preacher, Nathan. And told him to tell David, you're wrong. And Nathan being afraid of the king, you don't just tell the king you're wrong. The king may have your head cut off. He was a coward preacher. So what he decided to do was to make up 
an illustration so the king David could see himself. So he got an audience with the king and the king said, what do you want, preacher? He said, oh king, what would you do if there were two men in your kingdom? One was rich and had thousands of lambs and sheep. And one was so poor that he had one wee lamb. The rich man got a visitor. And when he wanted to feed his visitor, he did not bother all of his sheep and lambs. But he went and took that one little lamb that the poor man had and killed him and fed him to his visitor. King, what would you do if you knew somebody was in your kingdom like that? Can't you see, David, you, you bring him here to me. I will exalt. I will exact justice on that man. Who was he? Hey, Reverend Nathan did back up and said, it's you. What? What you talking about, preacher? You better tell me something right fast. God told me to tell you. He gave you a kingdom you didn't work for. Riches and gold that you never had before. God gave you everything. And that wasn't enough for you. But you went to that poor Uriah. Took his wife and married him for yourself. God told me to tell you, you are not going to feel his presence again until you get right with God. Haven't you ever lost God's spirit? I don't know about you, but I have. Y'all looking at me like, oh, you did? Guess what? I ain't the only one. You know, we have, <laughs> I got this sermon I like to preach. I didn't even get up here to say that. My sins ain't big as yours. <laughs> That's why the Ain't no, ain't no good way to say it, but that's why they fornicate an adulterer. Look at a gay man and said, this is an abomination before the Lord. You're wrong. Now, I might, I got my own sins, but at least I ain't gay. Preach why. The alcoholic says to the wino or to the drug addict, man, how you get caught up on drugs like you did? It's a shame to be caught up on drugs. Now, I drink my liquor, but at least I ain't a drug addict. Somebody tell him that alcohol is a drug. Preach white. We always want to say that my sins ain't big as yours. But can I tell you today, in God's sight, sin is just sin. The man and I was coming in on a plane one day and I said, look at that window. I said, I love her sitting next to the window. She looked out. I said, you see those trees? She said, yes. I said, now which one is bigger than the other one? She looked at me like I was crazy. Why are you going to ask me 
which one of those trees? I said, the reason I ask you that is because when God sees sin, he doesn't look at the big one and the little. They all look the same. Can I get a witness here? Now, David finally sees himself, and he doesn't blame the preacher. And listen, don't get mad when the preacher preach about a fault that you got. God is letting you hear that so you can straighten up yourself. I'm getting mad. I ain't going to hear him preach no more. <laughs> but when you love the Lord, you want to know when you're wrong. Can I get a witness here? Instead of him getting mad with Nathan the preacher, he started looking at himself. And when he looked at himself, he had to write this text. Have mercy upon me, O God. According to your loving kindness and according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. I want to ask you to do something. Blot out! my transgressions wash me from my sin cleanse me from my sin because he said number three verse that for I acknowledge too many of us want to acknowledge your hidden sin I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Look at verse 5. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. David, what you saying? I born in sin. That's why man is born, a baby is born with a bent to sin. You don't have to teach a baby how not to sin. You don't have to teach him how to sin. Excuse me, let me get that straight. You don't have to teach a baby to sin. Soon as get his teeth, it'll bite you. A baby knows how to do wrong automatically. Have you ever noticed how little children they learn the words to these nasty songs right fast. And you wonder where they get that from. And then they, they, they curse and they say something. You say, where, where, where you get that from? <laughs> I got it from you. I heard you say it. But isn't it strange how they key in on those negative things? Preach why. Why? Because we were born with a bent to sin. I better hurry up. But look at what it says in verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden parts, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. In other words, God wants you to be honest with yourself. If you will not be honest to yourself, you won't be honest to anybody else. Amen. I got it going down to verse number 10 now. He says, create in me a clean heart, O God. I want you to wipe out all of my sins. Create in me a clean heart because I want a right spirit. I want to learn how to listen. I want to learn how not to, Lord have mercy, talk so much. I want to learn how to above all Get understanding. 
but more than all of these. I want my spirit to be right. And I don't know about you, but I'm like David today. I want the Lord to be pleased in the way I walk. I want the Lord to create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me because I remember when I loved the songs of Zion I remember when I was in fellowship with my brothers and sisters. I remember how we used to have a good time praising the Lord. But now I don't want to go that way. Lord have mercy. Now I can't feel the presence of the Lord in my life. But I'm glad that God's mercies are new every day. Can I get a witness here? I thank God for his amazing grace because the Lord will change your spirit can I get a witness here the Lord will restore your joy the Lord will bring you peace with all mankind I don't know about you but I want to be at peace with everybody that I know I don't want any little use and big me I want everybody to know that I'm a child of the king and I ought to have a witness here and when your spirit is right, you can treat everybody right. So it says, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. When you got a good spirit, the world can see it. Can I get a witness here? I once mm -hmm, was in the company of several Muslims who came into the United States. And after I stood there for a minute, one of them looked at the other and said, He got good spirit. In other words, I didn't have to tell him anything. You don't even have to tell the, de the devil. He knows when you got the right spirit. That's why he wants to break your commitment to Jesus Christ. But I'm going to be like Paul today. I'll let nothing separate me from the love of Jesus Christ. I'm going to serve him if I have to do it by myself. I'm going to praise him if I have to praise him by myself. There ain't anybody here who want to praise the Lord. Because I found out something. If you 
want a blessing from the Lord stop criticizing but what you do the more you praise the Lord the more the Lord is gonna bless you I heard somebody say on TV last night and that uh, when you're in church where well, everybody knows you you ought to praise the Lord because if you don't praise him in here I know when you get out there you won't be praising him so I made up my mind I'm going to serve him I'm going to praise him the rest of my days because the Lord been good to me Has he been good to you? Now notice this. Somebody said when praises go up, blessings come down. Anybody in here need a blessing today? I know this is a virtual service. I know it's not many of us in here. But we still ought to make a joyful noise. Somebody ought to tell them, thank you. Well, thank you. Anybody know he's good? That I don't deserve his blessings. But I learned something. The more you praise him, the more he bless your soul. I've also learned the more you complain, the more you judge folk, you shut off your blessing well. Because you see, every time you complain, you take time away from where you could be praising him. I can tell you, he's good. Anybody know he's good? And even when I've been wrong, he keeps on blessing me. Don't mind my noisiness, but I've got to tell him, thank you. Oh, thank you. And the more I praise him, the more he restores my joy. And when he restored David's joy, he said, listen, I want to treat, I want to teach sinners of what you've done for me. And that's the way I am today. I want to tell the world that God is a mighty God. God is a way maker. God is a burden bearer. God is a heavy load sharer. And I'm going to praise him. Oh, I'm going to praise him. Your grace and mercy. I'm not here today because I deserve to be here. And if you tell the truth, you're not where you should be. But God's amazing grace. I was driving an automobile this week. And when I arrived back home, I thought about how the Lord had kept me one more trip. Oh, yes. And I was tempted to say that I did it. 
But when I thought about how the Lord kept me, when I got back home, you know what I said? Your grace and mercy I'm living this moment because of you I want to thank you and praise you too your grace and mercy brought me through Corral your grace I'm living this moment Living this moment Because of you I, I, I want to thank you Lord, I pray like me to tell the world salvation is free I once was blind but thank God I can see Grace and mercy reach way, way down and rescued me. Your grace, your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment. Because of you, I, I want to thank you. Lord, I pray. got one more thing justice demanded that I should die the grace and mercy said oh no oh no oh no we've already paid the price lost thank God I'm found grace and mercy reach way way down and rescued me your grace I'm 
I'm living this moment. Because of you, I, 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 I want to thank you. Lord, I pray. Praise you. Your grace. Your grace and mercy. Your grace. Woke me up early this morning. Started me on my way. When I think about what you've done for me. When I was on my way to a devil's hell. Your grace rescued me. Lord, I want to tell you, thank you right now. I want to tell you, thank you, Jesus. Your grace. Your grace. Your grace. Rock me through what I am today, God made me. What I know, God taught me. And the little possessions I have, God gave them to me. And every time I can pay a rent note, house note, God's grace let me live for another month. When I pay my car note, <laughs> God's grace is letting me ride another month. Now you don't know what I'm talking about unless you've been there. And when I look at this pandemic and how many people don't have food to eat, but Lorraine asked me today, what do you want to eat? I, I had a choice. Because I remember when I used to have to eat a can of pork and beans. Y'all don't know about this. A flat can of sardines. <laughs> Some government cheese. Anybody know anything about government cheese? When I drove up in the yard this morning, I saw them big cars. Y'all got them hogs and those. Some of them cars so big, they look like a condominium on the road. God's been good to us. And don't ever forget God's goodness. We got an election coming up here. Don't create the sin of not going to do your civic duty. You need to vote. In the pulpit, I can't tell you who to vote for. I got to close. I've said this many times that man that had his parrot 
and he had a customer that was unpretty. And every time that woman would come in, that parrot would look at her and say, you are so ugly. Every day. And one day she got mad with the parrot. And she told the owner of the store, if I come in here one more time, and that parrot tells me how ugly I am. I ain't coming in here no more. Man went and blessed his parrot. I said, yeah, you better not say it again. So the next day, this ugly lady came in. She looked at the parrot. And it looked at her. And it said, you know. <laughs> I hope you get the gist of my story there. God bless you. Thank you in the audience for being with us today. And I want to thank our officers. Wonderful devotion. And Dick, you said some verses today that I didn't know. Yeah, I noticed Jason didn't say it either. Amen. And uh, that song y'all remember you were singing that I didn't know something over. Did you know it? No, but I tell you, like my wife said, you put your foot in it, dog. <laughs> Amen. Thank you all. I'm going to call for a meeting from the uh, Red White Corral soon so that we can, we can get practice up on the songs that we used to know, because I know you can do it. Is that all right? So as we get ready to go, let me thank our church clerk. Let me thank my first lady let me thank our engineer our camera people let me thank the audio visual room that are upstairs my effort to telecommunications ministry our musicians thank all of you for what you've done and i want you to move with me now you know i like to go this way right ready Right, everybody moving in syncopation. Lean on me. I see you, Sadie. When you're not strong, I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. For it won't be long. I'm gonna need somebody to. Lean, lean on me When you're not strong I'll be your friend I'll help you carry on Oh, it won't be long I'm gonna need somebody to lean on me When you're not strong I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. For it won't be long. I'm gonna need somebody to lean. Call me. Call me. Call me. I may have an answer to what the problem is. It didn't get too late. Call me. Call me. Call me. Call me. Call me. It won't be too long. Call me. I need you. Call me. To give me a call. Call me. Call me. Call me. Call me. Call me. Now may the grace. Of our once crucified and risen Savior. Rest, rule, and abide with this, his people. Now, henceforth, 
and forevermore. Let us sing together. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Good job, everybody. Good job.